Hello everyone and welcome to a new series called NCAA Football 07 PS2 Harvard Clemson Dynasty Mode. I am Jose Sports Game over this new series. Uh, I really wanted to put uh, a football video game into this channel for a while, but didn't know how to do it. And eventually I had the idea of putting this uh, as a new series. Uh, but the idea is to turn a really bad team into a powerhouse team. I know it's gonna take a few seasons to do that, but you know, it's it's worth it. Uh, one of the you know one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because you know I don't know how many of you see Miles Dawkins 24/7's channel, but you know he usually does something like this. He turns a really bad team. Our uh, created team all usually uh, uh, into a powerhouse and take a few seasons to do so. And I really want to do something like that, but this time it's with NCAA Football 07. He does it with NCAA Football 06. I mean, granted, the two games look almost kind of the same, but different is, you know, the backgrounds and you know, the little details and stuff. But anyway, going back into this, this series, uh, the idea is to turn Harvard which uh, in this game is usually uh, uh, a Division 2 school and turn them into a Division 1 NCAA football powerhouse. And, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a few seasons to do so. A lot of great recruiting, uh, you know, recruiting three, four, five star recruits in order to get, you know, get things going. Uh, so far, we're not doing so good. Uh, it's, and, and here, this game I show three of the three of the first four games I will ever play. Uh, I think it's actually three, uh, four of the five games actually. I can't show you the second game because something happened with the recording that didn't really allow me to you know to put that part of the video in here. Uh, so here we're gonna face the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and I don't know why, but I actually find it easier to face ranked teams than I do facing on ranked teams. Are these teams that are more on my class, which is which are teams that are struggling to win games. I just I don't know. Like look at this, look at this. This is against Minnesota, a ranked team, taking it all the way to the crib, and I just don't know what's going on. Like against Minnesota, I was not exactly balling out, but I was playing better than I did against Buffalo, and I just I don't know what. what what was going on here? Like, sure, the defense really sucked, but the offense at least did what they could do. Here comes a big pass, and that was a touchdown. Like, most of the scoring happened in the first half. So in the second half, it, it was like Minnesota said, "Enough, you know, we're gonna, we're not gonna let you score anymore." And yeah, here comes another pass, and he gets it to go. But honestly, it's gonna take a lot of work. And it's gonna take a few seasons to make sure this all works out. It isn't, uh, it isn't a thing that's gonna happen overnight. Uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna take at least five seasons before we even have a shot to have a winning season with this program. If we have a winning team by season three, then we're making good progress. Now, the thing is that my goal is to get this team into the Big East or the ATC, you know, a, a, a more respectable conference just so, you know, we can face better teams or we can, at, at the very least, uh, be more respectable, you know, have a better chance of getting to a bowl game and all that type of stuff. But, I, but before that, I want to make sure that my team is well built and at least well built enough to the point where, you know, it can at least be a good thing to put your team in here, you know, get him in the right direction and stuff. Like, you know, I would give myself at least about about a seven wins season in order to do this. A seven wins might be the, the goal to do this type of stuff. Like, like I said, either the Big East or the ATC, that's kind of where I'm kind of going to. But I, it all depends on how things go from here and from here to, to there. I don't know, like, let, let's just see how things go. Now, going into, into summary against uh, Western Michigan, 
You know, I had a couple of good plays here and there, but I was pretty struggling against this team. I, again, like I was falling out. I mean, compared to these, compared to Buffalo and Western Michigan, I was balling out against Michigan. And I just don't know how. Like Michigan is supposed to be a ranked team. We're, we're, we're not even supposed to score a point against Minnesota, and, and we somehow found a way to score three touchdowns. But against Western Michigan and Buffalo, it was like, what the hell is going on? Like, how in the world are you not able to do this? It's, it's like it doesn't even make sense. It's like Michigan is not even taking that, taking us that seriously, and they're just trying to give us some. You know, get to give some little bit of a breathing room, like you know, let them have some fun. We'll, we'll take care of business later on, that type of thing. Maybe, maybe it's like that. Maybe I'm interpreting it the wrong way. I just, I really don't know. Uh, but yeah, right now we're at the end of the conference. I'm not sure if you can recall the conference. You know, the place where you will find uh, Navy, Army, and Notre Dame. Uh, I had to take Temple out of this in order to make sure that Harvard was uh, in, in, the, in this the dynasty mode. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I'm not sure how it works with uh, NCAA Football 14. Maybe I won't have to take a team away in that, in that type of situation. Uh, if I was if I was playing NCAA Football 14. But anyway, in this situation where what we do. There are, there's one right spot on this roster, and that's the halfback. Like, sure, his stats are not exactly the best right now, but if you were to look at that online, line like, like that offensive lineman, like, it, it really, it really stinks. Like, heck, not, not even Marshawn Lynch could get five yards per, per carry against this low line. It would be a miracle if he gets like 4.5 yards like like the halfback is like like an 85 overall like he would be good enough to be a starting uh halfback uh, on on a mid-tier college football team of sorts so that's like the only bright spot that this team has like the quarterback has his good times and his bad times like he can throw the ball deep but it's in really with that much consistency and that wide receiving core is extremely stinky like, you know, the one that has the most amount of speed is the uh, number 83, and, and his speed is like, like what, uh, like 85? Like, that would barely, that would make you more of a tight end than a wide receiver in most elite teams. But that's, but that's what we gotta deal with here. And going into this uh, game against Vanderbilt, surprisingly we had a good start against this team. And you know we we went off like you're gonna see a few uh, a few no huddles against uh, Vanderbilt in this situation because I have finally found a play that was working with this halfback. Like this halfback is good enough to be a starter on most teams, but the only one is just not helping. Like he's averaging like three point three yards a carry. Like if, if you were to see you know the stats of an average halfback, like you would you would be. You were like, yeah, he's really averaging that little. But then you would look at that online and you would say, oh, that makes that makes much more sense. Like he's working with what he's got. And here, you, once again, they're going with that no huddle action. They're trying their best to go with what works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You already know. Calling a few audibles, and he goes off once again, going off, and he and he short of the first down. But the very next play might still be the one that might give enough score. Another no how to play you may know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's what's working so far, keep going at it. The tight end in motion kinda of turning into a tight end. And he has an open hole and that's gonna be a touchdown. And that's the first touchdown of the game. And uh, an interception by number three and He's going to get a, a few yards in here after the interception. That was a nice job on this part, by the way. And then later on, the quarterback deep bomb to number 83, one of the, one of the other five spots in this team. A, a decent a decent wide receiver. Not the best, but, you know, he he's good for, you know, what the situation that we're working with right now. 
And once again, you know, the halfback is, you know, getting that first down after going on fourth and short. And here comes the wideout number 83. And he is off once again. Like, you know, he's our go-to guy right now. Uh, that, that's not saying much, no, that this team sucks. Number 42, he's decent, but, you know, he's not a long-term plan. If we find a great wideout, he might, he might not get many touches. But overall, you know, that no huddle. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And going on back to pass, number 16. Going off and he gets a touchdown right here to Mr. Dependable, Mr. Go to guy number 83 and number 97 going on tackling for a loss. Number 16 going back to pass and here comes number 18, I think, and he gets a few yards of his own. And you know, we're gonna have our good moments, but overall, we're gonna have a, a lot of bad losses. Number 83 going off and he has some room. And he's on a foot race, and that's going to be a long touchdown. A 75-yard touchdown pass to number 83. And here we go, number 42. Decent wideout. Um, he might have some potential depending on how long he has left. And here we are. He We lose this game, man.